Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at my Mordheim warband and talking about some digital conversions. Gruffy Crow. Ah! So, I'm sure for people who've seen my videos before, this won't shock and surprise you uh, to hear that I'm looking at miniatures again for another game uh, that I've not played yet and I've not played in many years. Uh, the reason I've started collecting a Mordheim warband uh, is because the club just around, around the corner from my house, uh, the Lead Belt Gaming Arena, is intending on starting up a regular Mordheim campaign uh, that I'm very keen to get involved with. Um, so yeah, I needed a band. I started off with some cool witch hunters, uh, but they looked like they might be heading towards being a popular faction. So I thought I'd try and do something a little bit uh, more obscure uh, that it'd be unlikely anyone else would have. And I always quite liked the idea of the Carnival of Chaos stuff. And I've collected Nurgle stuff in the past. Uh, so I thought that made sense for me. Uh, I scoured the internet. There are no decent Carnival and Chaos uh, models out there um, for, for printing. Uh, there's quite a good set from old school miniatures. Um, but they're not necessarily my style. But they kind of fit with the style of the old ones. And obviously the old Games Workshop ones are worth an absolute fortune these days. Uh, so... I came down on creating my own. So, that's where we ended up with these guys. These guys are based on the Plague Carnival Blood Bowl team from Punga. Um, so, the original models don't have any weapons um, in their hands at all. They've all got bare hand poses. Um, but other than that, they fit that played carnival theme really well so we've got sort of clowns sort of jesters and things like that so they yeah they're a good good match so then my challenge was obviously to give them weapons uh, first of all I had a scoot around the internet because I've not built a Mordheim warband for a while uh, and I saw a list that had a couple of the sort of standard guys the brethren with swords and shields uh, one with a bow uh, a tainted one and yeah some a couple of the brutes so first of all I started with the list and kind of decided exactly what I was going to require and then I went hunting for it uh, as I said I had the blood bowl team as a base uh, so that was a good start and then I needed some weapons now I'm a big fan of Vivictus uh, they've got some lovely models and they're definitely doing a lot of amazing uh, Mordheim sort of themed stuff at the moment so good in fact that I almost completely abandoned this project and started cl collecting some sort of humans uh, or mercenary faction uh, but no I stuck with it and everything Vivictus has is some knolls and I decided that their weapons and sort of shields and what have you and even actually right down to their hands were just what I needed to get this completed so then at that point what I could have done is printed off the circus printed off the knoll parts and done conversions the old ways with a bit of green stuff and knives and what have you but I thought I'd try something um, something new um, and something a bit more sort of slick for me and that's to do digital conversions uh, the way I did that is uh, I pulled the original circus models into Blender uh, and then I brought the null parts in I discovered for the regular guys um, that the null parts needed to be about 80%, uh, so I scaled them to 0.8, and that means that among these sort of human-sized guys, I've got quite a sort of standard, standardized set of sort of weapons and hands uh, by always keeping them at 80 rather than scaling them per model, and that has obviously helped as well to keep the shields the same size and things like that by having that standard size. Uh, for the big guys, I just left them at the original null sizes, and so yeah, what I did is I'd pull the model in line up the part I wanted to replace uh, with the part we were looking at sort of I was actually using quite often the knuckles on the backs of the hands to try and work out sort of the most natural way and kind of socketing these in so they'd fit neatly in the original model's wrist at that point I would cut away the original hand and uh, the most of the bits I didn't need and then sort of use the smoothing tool to remove any extra bits and pieces, sort of file it down to a sort of nub um, that the original, the new hand replaces. Uh, 
as well as sort of filing down any bits uh, on the new hand that were now out of place as well. Next up, we join the two models together into one mesh and remesh the whole thing. Uh, so it's now one whole sturdy model. I remeshed at 0.05. That seemed to be working for me without losing any of the details on any of the parts. Once that's done, this is just like green stuff into me, actually. I think this, this feels uh, quite natural. We just went in and just smoothed any weird little anomalies or bits that didn't look quite right. And if need be, I can always sort of uh, pump up or sort of gouge out any, any bits that we don't like the look of fairly easily. I'm not an expert at using this software whatsoever. A lot of this is self-taught, works fairly naturally. Uh, the biggest challenge for me was just getting the different views right and everything like that. But yeah, just once we got that all nice and smoothed in, um, just exported it back as an STL again. I'm most pleased with this guy because we managed to get the original pose and I managed to just ever so slightly repose the arm as well. Um, just so it'd fit this double-handed spear thing. So he definitely doesn't look like a Blood Bowl player now. And I really like this archer as well. He's almost ready for that pose. Very little work done to uh, change anything on the original model. Just swapped those hands around and then added a uh, quiver on the back. And he, I think, makes a pretty suitable archer. One of the ones that was a bit more challenging was the tainted one. Uh, I just used the sword as it was out of the null kit. Uh, this is the prop version, so this didn't have a null hand on it. And what I did is I actually, instead of uh, just replacing the hand, because I wanted to have to keep this lovely hand from the original model, uh, I actually managed to use the sort of repose tool, which is sometimes a bit wild, uh, but that used that to sort of bend the fingers around the sword more. Uh, and I think that's come across quite well. Uh, these are quite fun models. Uh, with Nurglings spattered all over them. Even the ringleader, I only added this staff as opposed to the little club that he had to start with. And as you can see, these models are fresh off the printer. I haven't even finished clearing up all of the bits and pieces off them yet. And it is really nice having them come straight off the printer. Uh, I wasn't gluing any of these parts together. I wasn't like, you know, having to construct them or uh, do any conversions after that. The only thing I have done is add them to these bases. Uh, these are from Imitation of Life uh, from the recent Kickstarter. These are just some of the sample ones. I am waiting for the uh, Kickstarter rewards to come out before I can base the rest of these guys in the same bases. But I really like these for more time. I think they're going to look real nice. The only other thing I've added as well is we found these guys. Uh, these were Danis Poxlings on my mini factory and they fit quite nicely. We've got a little dancing one. Uh, that either if they meant to or not reminds me of space balls and we have uh, accordion and we've got a juggling one as well and they're quite nice little models uh, I'll put links to all the original files in the description um, if you want to build these yourself painting wise obviously I've started on this guy um, I think I quite like the green and the yellows that I'm using which so far is this uh, intermediate green from model color and my, one of my favourites, Evelyn Sunset. I'm also going to have a bit of a play around with this retro uh, desert sulphur yellow because I think that kind of has that sort of sickly tint, uh, tint to it that could work quite nicely. Uh, so this model is uh, just for me testing some uh, colourings. I said I quite like the trousers and the, the red and the green but I'm not sold on how I've done the skin on this one. I think I want paler skin possibly. Uh, so I'm going to keep painting this guy up and just playing around with the colours. I might even end up reprinting them and starting from scratch. And just using them to test the scheme so yeah as i said i'm really happy uh, with these guys especially these two and because of uh, how well these have turned out i'd certainly consider doing this kind of conversion again it was actually quite a lot of fun kind of addictive trying to work out how to convert these poses and sort of what weapons to choose for each one there's still a few more characters left uh, from the blood bowl team that i haven't done this to yet uh, so as my campaign goes and my band grows potentially I can always make a few extra changes, which is exactly what I have done. As you can see, uh, I've got everybody painted. I've actually had three games now. I'm still waiting on the nice bases, 
so for the, now these guys are just stuck to some MDF bases uh, which I've just sort of painted grey or I mean basically just the undercoat uh, but I should just be able to slice these off and pop them on the good bases when I get them so since the beginning of the campaign we've already recruited a couple of extra guys so I did a guy with twin pistols also using some Vivictus parts uh, I think he's come out quite cool and we did, used a, did a strong man as well uh, once again getting reposing the arms to get this sort of two-handed effect uh, that was already in a similar pose spent some time trying to do leopard print on this guy I've also been really enjoying painting them uh, the group I was looking at initially were quite uh, sort of bland they were going to be witch hunters and so sort of quite uh, sort of dark earthy colors whereas I feel like with this I've got to do something quite colorful I've also gone absolutely wild doing these conversions so I did a couple of halflings there's no rules for halflings for these guys so they're just going to be extra brethren uh, if I need them and uh, we've got another archer um, and a guy with a sword and a shield I'm really happy with the paint job on this guy actually the archer I couldn't get rid of the blood bowl football under his arm uh, so I just turned it into a nurgling we've also started future proofing uh, with some plague bearers once again quite happy with the way uh, he's come out uh, and quite happy with the conversion I did here uh, just add in the jester's hat to a couple of these plague bearers from Duncan Shadow the most ambitious com conversion I've done so far uh, was this big guy could not find a nice plague cart file out there on the internet either haven't finished painting this guy still a work in progress uh, but this is a downsized prison cart can't remember where that's from if I'm honest we've added some of the shields these weren't stuck on after these are uh, merged into the bars um, so there was no sticking required and they're gonna be nice and sturdy we've done a little sort of banner board um, I said all the wheels and stuff were separate but they were all being merged into one file We've added the cheerleaders and beastmen uh, from the Punga set. And we even added a Nurgle logo in here. And then outside of the printer, what I have done is added some magnets onto this roof. Because I was going to glue the roof down. Um, but I have actually been using it as a dice prison. Um, but those magnets are enough to stop the roof from coming off. Unless I want it to. I've also stayed true to my idea of upgrading my current models uh, to represent the new gear they've got. So the, this guy's recently had some armor bought for him. So I've took the opportunity to change the axe. I quite like this one. Also from Vivictus from their Orc set. Uh, and we've added armor plates to elbows and knees. Um, which I'm actually worried is admitting more blood bodily, which is weird. Um, but happy with the way they've landed. I was able to sort of move the collar around a little bit to accommodate those. I've really been enjoying this project. Um, for a start, it's been getting me some regular uh, war games in, which I've not had for a while. They've been really fun models to convert and paint, and it's just great fun uh, getting them out on the tabletop. And I feel like I've learned more about Blender in the last month or so building these guys than I have just up to this point um, which just goes to show that you just have to I think just give it a go and eventually you just learn some of the tricks as you go along I think uh, there probably is easier ways to learn than, than that way but now every time I look at 3d file um, I've got it in the back of my head that this is something I'm able to do now uh, for instance get close enough here uh, but there is a little crossed tool symbol on this hat uh, which I added in to represent this guy being an engineer and a potential second uh, uh, Mordheim warband I was thinking about. So I said uh, great fun and I'll probably be doing more of it so let me know if you want me to go into any more depth about how I did this because uh, I'm potentially going to redo the cart again from scratch fixing some of my initial mistakes and let me know any, if you've got any ideas uh, of other things this could be used for. And also, any tips for playing Carnival in Mordheim would be very welcome.